Um, let me give some injury updates here. Um, <clears throat> Christian James will, will be available. Again, uh, pending no setbacks for a roll on Saturday. Probably not every snap, certainly not every snap, but enough to impact the game. <clears throat> BJ Anderson's out, soft tissue. Grayson Morgan's out with his back. Um, Steven Sanianola uh, has been back at practice, so um, excited for that. You know, he not quite ready to work back into game action, but um, has had a good couple days. Trudell Berry was able to practice today, so we feel positively about where he's trending. DeRicky Wright uh, practiced all week, uh, not 100%, but certainly ahead of where he was a week ago. Jalen Mahoney has been fine. Savion Riley is back and available. Um, Langston P Patterson back and available. And then London Humphreys has had a, um, just a lower body injury that's come up. <clears throat> and um, it kept him out today. He practiced on Tuesday and, and part of yesterday. We'll see how he responds to treatment. Uh, questionable right now, but certainly uh, could, could make it back. Um, what's the quarterback injury situation at right now? So um, AJ's been on a pitch count. He was able to get some work in today. Um, you know, was still a little sore yesterday. You know, we'll push that decision all the way up to game time, but <clears throat> but um, I think we feel good. We've we've trained obviously Ken and Walt's been a part of that too. Um, we'll be ready, but um, you know we're gonna we're gonna wait and see how he responds from the week of practice. So are the other three quarterbacks going to be available this weekend? They will be. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and specifically, Ken and and Walt has, have spent the time this week training. Um, you know, Drew Dickey's a guy that is is always ready. It's just it's hard to get four guys work. So we've we've focused on three, um, and those have been the three: AJ, Ken, and Walt. Okay. Can't be AJ. How confident are you in Ken Seals or I guess Walter Taylor? Well, I know obviously there's been a lot more game experience for Ken, and so um, I, I loved how he came out against Kentucky and finished that game out. I know he would be excited to, to have the opportunity to be out there and play. He'll be ready. Um, and, um, and if he's out there, I just want him to relax and, and let it rip um, because he's invested so much in this program in my time here that um, he's got the full support of our sideline. Um, you know, Walt, as a young player, is talented, and we've seen that talent. We've seen flashes of some really incredible play from him. He's got an opportunity with his size and his athletic ability too, to, to uh, have an impact, um, you know, outside of just throwing the ball around the field. And so um, he's prepared hard, but anytime, you know, he's a, he's a freshman, a redshirt freshman, you know, you, you don't quite have the game exposure. Um, you know, he'll be ready to be out there, but there will be some learning on the move with him too. Um, you know, with the number of injuries that have kind of piled up you know how are you kind of managing that the best we know how to <laughs> uh it's hard you know and i feel like I, i've already started to reflect on you know the year we've had to this point injury wise i i i want to look back at fall camp and say you know that the, the kind of soft tissue issues we had early in camp um were indicative of of somewhere a uh, a failure in our process in the summer, you know, or a faltering of our process in the summer. And that early start caught up with us this year. Um, well, I'm talking about the week zero, you know, losing a week of training. Um, and so, you know, not that we have another week zero game moving forward, but, you know, we have to make sure that when we drop into training camp that our guys are physically prepared for that. And I feel like there's just been this ripple that's, that starts in training camp. and with the level of exertion that we have day in, day out, that the guys haven't fully recovered themselves. And so um, we, we've managed it by getting capable people ready to get on the field. Um, it's been challenging, but I, you know, I also have been really proud with some of the guys that have stepped up to take on new roles, and um, they'll continue to do that as we, as we work our way to the bye week. Is that something that's just a week zero byproduct, or is that something you can fix to an extent you well, I, I think to say it's just week zero is, is, is really deflecting, right? We want to we wanna first say, what, what, are, what are the things that we can do 
to have impact over this to make sure we're ready. And that, that could be in the, in the design of the first few practices, although we, we did scale up. So, I mean, it wasn't like we dropped into a two hour practice. Um, so how can we impact in our design? And then what, what does the training look like leading up to training camp um, that, that might better equip them physically? And so I, I don't want to put it off on week zero. I do think though, that last week of training, missing that, um, it does have some level of impact. With the receivers kind of having a slow day with, I guess, five receptions between Shepard, Humphreys, and McGowan, is that something you're intentional about trying to get them going again, or you just let it come to them again? Um, well, yeah, I think you're intentional about trying to get them touches and get them involved early. Um, I also think it's a product of drive stalling out you know, on three plays, you know, we, we have to, we have to get in rhythm early so that we can maintain pressure on the defense. Um, and we weren't able to do that. Um, but um, certainly, you know, again, when you look at our team, it, you, you look at that group and you say that is a really talented group that can impact winning for us. We have to, we have to find ways to get them the ball that doesn't include you know, giving it to the other team. That, that, that's the challenge right now is, you know, we recognize the strength that we have in our passing game, but we also see where it's, it's been kind of the Achilles heel of um, our efforts here in the last couple of weeks. So, um, so creating that balance where you're facilitating performance there, but you're also not, you know, putting the ball at risk. Right. If it's Ken on Saturday, is there an element of, I guess, stability and comfortability with him being an older guy? There is, yeah. I mean, I think we, we know Ken. We know his heart. We know, um, you know, the competitive spirit there. Um, and he, like, there's not a person that's worked harder in preparation. So I think, I think what you want for the team, whether you're a player or coach, is to look out in the field and just have total trust. And, and, and truthfully, we talk about these environments as families and as a brotherhood. And to me, the manifestation of that is you have this spirit of connection where you're doing something hard with people you care about. And when you have a level of trust, then our responsibility on Saturdays is just to support the efforts of the guys that we care about. And all that to say, you know, Ken fits that mold perfectly. He has um, the trust of the team, the trust of the staff, everyone's going to be behind him if it's him and um, he's not going to be perfect you know and that's okay um, it will will support him through any mistakes if he's out there and and um, I'll enjoy you know being in the competitive moment with those guys